the formula in this question looks pretty complicated, but if we actually just start finding some of the terms, so when r is equal to 1, we keep timesing these until the last term when we've got n minus 1 plus 1. So actually when r equals 1, there's just a single term here, n, and it's going to be n over 1, which actually we can just write as n x to the 1, which is just, yeah, x. But n equals, so r equals 2, sorry. We just keep multiplying n by n minus 1 until the last term, which is n minus 2 plus 1. Well, actually, that is n minus 1. So for this term, we'll get n, n minus 1, then we'll stop and divide it by 2 factorial, 1 times 2, and x squared. And if you keep going, you'll see that this is none other than a general binomial expansion for real coefficients. And this is what makes this question challenging because we're not just finding an expansion of 1 minus x all to the minus a half using this formula. We have to be able to do it using summation notation and simplify it using you know, knowledge of um, the N NCR uh, function and so on. Hmm. We can definitely make a start because we can see that basically we've got the above formula but n is equal to minus a half and x, this x in the original formula, is actually minus x. And therefore, 1 minus x to the minus a half is going to equal 1 plus the summation from r equals 1 to infinity. And I just replace all my n's by minus a half. So it's going to be minus a half times minus a half minus 1. That's minus 3 over 2. Then minus 5 over 2 all the way up to the very last term, which is minus a half minus r plus 1. That's going to be a half minus r. And I'm dividing by 1 times 2. I could write this as r factorial, but they haven't done that, so I'm going to leave it like this for the time being. That will come in later on for sure. And then finally, it's going to be minus x to the r. So that's step 1. The question is, how are we going to be able to man manipulate it and show that it's equal to this? Well, a good shout is to just, first of all, expand the thing that we're trying to find. So it might be a bit easier to see what's going on. Now, 2R R is, is actually 2RCR, R, which is 2R factorial over r factorial, r factorial, in the same way that, say, 5c3 is 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial. So, yeah, we find 5 factorial, we divide by 3 factorial, and then you divide by the difference. And then we're going to have x to the r. It's just that we're also dividing by 4 to the r. So somehow we've got to get this, and we've got to be able to get this worth just be bearing this in mind as we go forward. Right, I'm just going to delete this. This is sort of the, going to hover around as that's what we're aiming for. Um, well, okay, so I, I don't really want all these divided by 2s in there, and I can see that at some point I'm dividing by 2 to the r, well actually I'm dividing by 2 to the r twice, so um, that can help us, that can help us in the first part, because I'm going to first thing to think about is that how many terms are there in this numerator and it's actually going to be um, how many well let's look when we had uh, our first term we had just one term in the top just n for x squared we had two terms and therefore x to the r in general we're going to have r terms and my next step therefore can be to take out this half so it's going to be minus 1, minus 3, minus 5. I'm, I'm timesing by 2, essentially. So this one will become 1 minus 2r. And then I'm timesing by a half to the power r. Because that's how many halves I've taken out. I've taken out a half for this one, for this one, for this one. It's r terms in general.
Okay, I'm going to be writing quite a few steps down, but just trying to explain every single one rather than like rushing through it too quickly. Next up, I want to get rid of these negatives. So actually, I can do the same again, and I could have maybe have done this all in one go, but I'm going to take a minus one out of every single one. So it's going to be one times three times five, all the way up. Now I just flip this one around to two r minus one, and then I'm going to times by minus one to the power r. I can also take a minus one out of the minus x to the r and write it as minus one to the r, x to the r. Now the great thing about this is that if I have minus one to the power of an odd number, then yes, it'll be minus one. And if I have minus one to the power of an even number, it will just be one. It must be that this here is, uh, I'll, I'll get minus one to the two r, and this must be even. So it must equal one. And therefore I can literally just cancel that out. Okay, it is looking in a lot better shape already. You can even see we've got r factorial on the bottom. We've, I've just noticed actually I've missed one thing. Sorry, I missed that half, didn't I? It's very easy to miss things, especially when I'm trying to cram it into quite a small space. And actually, uh, no, I won't rush it. So I'm going to have a half to the R, of course, in there as well, and an X to the R. Okay, so I hope you're happy with that step. Okay, the next step is probably the most subtle and you know difficult to realize, I think. I want to get 2R factorial on top. By the way, that is going to, so 2R factorial is going to be 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 2R. Now we're not that far off of this, in fact, because we've got 1 times 3 times 5 all the way up to 2R minus 1. We're just missing all the even ones. So I can actually just bring them in. It's going to be 1 times 2 times 3 all the way up to 2R. So that's going to be one more divided by, I can actually write my a half to the r times x to the r is x over 2 to the r. That's one step forward in trying to get x to the r over um, 4 to the r, or it is x over 4 all to the r. Right, so to deal with this, I just then need to have, it's going to be 1 times 2 times, times r as before. And then I'm also timesing by 2 times 4. Times 6 and so on, all the way up to 2R. Okay, so I've manipulated it as shown. We are getting there. I'm not far off, in fact. So I can now write that as 1 plus the sum from r equals 1 to infinity of 2r factorial, which is what I wanted. And then it's going to be r factorial. Okay, it's just how to deal with this. What I can actually do with this is um, take a factor of 2 out of each term. So I'm going to get two, there's, there's going to be r terms again, because we're going from two to two r. So I can take a factor of two out of the first one, and then the second one, so I get two squared, the third one, two cubed, and then the rth term, so it will end up being two to the r, 1 times 2 times up to r. Okay, that's quite hard, I think. But now we are really, really close. 
because I've got 1 plus the sum from r equals 1 to infinity. It's going to be 2r factorial over r factorial r factorial. And I can make this as 1 over 2 to the r. And hence, I can write this as x to the 4 to the power of r. Essentially, like I, I did it quite quickly, didn't I? But it's going to be x to the r over 2 to the r, and then another 2 to the r. But this is just x to the r, 2 to the r squared. And I can actually just square the 2, because I could write it as 2 to the 2r, and then it'd be 4 to the r. And then I can finally write it like that. So I'm just trying to convince you if you weren't convinced. The only thing we have to do right at the end is to um, bring that 1 into the summation. And when I, if I make r just equal to 0, we're going to get 0 factorial divided by 0 factorial. That's just 1. Here, I'm going to have 0 over 4. Sorry, I'm going to have x to the 4 all up to the power of 0. That's just 1. And so it's actually fine to just start the summation at 0 and go to infinity and ignore that 1 out the front. So finally, I can write it from r equals 0 to infinity of 2r r. And then it's going to be x over 4 all to the r, which is what the required form was. Okay, tough um, start to this question, I think. In the next part, we're asked to show that this expression can be written as this summation, but we don't need to start from the beginning. We can actually use the result that we have along the same lines as you would in an A-level question. So I've got 9 minus 4x squared to the minus a half. Now I want to be able to use the formula with a 1 in it, so I'm going to need to factorise out my 9. This, that's what I was talking about when, uh, sorry, related to the A-level questions. You see these sorts of things and we, we take a 9 out and then I'm going to get 4 over 9x squared here. And I'm raising all of this to the power of minus a half. 9 to the power of minus a half is just 1 over 3. So I'm going to get a third. 1 minus 4 over 9x squared to the minus a half. So now I just need to place my this, this x in here is going to be 4 over 9 x squared. But yeah, I've still got the minus a half, so I can just I can just substitute in and replace that x. So it's going to be from r equals 0 to infinity of 2 r r. I don't need to do anything with that. Then I've just got 4 over 9 x squared over 4 all to the power of r. And 4s are actually going to cancel. Which is going to leave me with x squared over 9 but I can write that as 3 squared. And this is all to the power of r. Sorry, I just realized you might have spotted this. I missed a third. I should have carried that through. Which is going to leave me with the sum from r equals 0 to infinity of 2r. r x to the 2r, which was what was required, and then over 3 to the 2r. 
again, I forgot the third, that needs to be there because finally, if we want to write it in this form that we've asked for, I need to bring that third into the summation. It's absolutely fine to bring constants out of summations because instead of summing everything and then times them by a third, I can just times each term by a third and sum it. It's the same thing. It's like the, uh, is it the distributive law um, when you're adding and multiplying? I can't, sorry, I can't remember the, quite the technical term right now. X to the 2R, uh, all, it, all, it's, all I'm saying is that A times B plus C is equal to AB plus AC. So we can either add two things together and then times it by a or times each of the terms by a and then add them together. That's all that's going on here when I bring that third in and it's going to give me three to the two, uh, two R plus one on the bottom. And that's going to be my final answer. Maybe I could just add that Q is going to equal two R plus one. Okay, nice. All right, next up, part C. We are asked to find this. Um, now, it looks an awful like what we already have. And it looks quite a lot different to sort of what we had right at the start because there's an R in here. That's the same. Um, and then I'm just using the result that we have. So we got this here is equal to, um, what was it, 9 minus 4x squared to the minus a half. Okay, well, to bring a 2r over 9 down, particularly the r, we can differentiate with respect to x. So this factorial is just a constant um, for different r's, different constants for different r's. And then I can bring 2r down. Um, that's, yeah, that's okay. And this will be x to the 2r minus 1. I'm dividing by a constant. That's just going to stay the same. Okay, I've got that. Now, I also need to remember that to differentiate the right-hand side, which I'm going to bring the minus a half down. It's going to be 9 minus 4x squared to the minus 3 over 2. And then using the chain rule, I also have to differentiate the inside, which is going to become minus 8x. I've not written the chain rule down in full. I've just done it um, using, you know, hopefully practice this. Just differentiate as normal and then differentiate the function inside. Tie that up. It's going to give me 4x, 9 minus 4x squared minus 3 over 2. Now I'm nearly there, it's just that in the answer they've got 2r over 9 and they've also got 3 to the power of 2r minus 1. So it's worth just thinking about that. 1 over 3 to the 2r plus 1 will actually be 1 over 3 squared times 1 over 3 to the 2r minus 1. Just using my rule of powers and this will be 1 over 9. So actually I have the required thing. Hence then it's going to be 2r over 9. Now this bit of working is essential to show that I you know understand where this has come from. And then it will be x over 3 all to the 2r minus 1. And that will equal that result that I got, 4x 
9 minus 4x squared, water minus 3 over 2. So I feel like my argument's convincing enough. There we go. That was probably the second hardest um, part of this question, to be fair. I think the first, the very first part was the hardest part. But of course, you need to have got the result to be able to do part D. So it's quite unforgiving. Hence, find the exact value of this. Well, it looks very similar. But I've got a root 5 in there. Um, and I've got x over 3 here. And... I don't have a 2i minus 1 there, so we need to think about how we're going to work out what to substitute in here. Clearly need, I clearly need to substitute in x. If I, I need a 3 in there, because if I let x equals 3, then this will cancel out completely to just 1. But I also need a 1 over 5 to the r. So if I let x equal 3 over root 5, when I raise root 5 to the power of 2, I'll get 5. And I can see that I'm going to, I think this is going to work out. Now, it's, it's kind of a, just a, a case of like looking at it and seeing what works. I suppose technically, um, it's just awkward to, to set anything equal to one another here and here because they're, they're not, it's not in the form 2r minus 1. I think like just uh, observing it and seeing what must work is the best way to go. So we need the 3, so because there's no 3 to the power of 2r minus 1 in the in this expression, so I need to cancel it out. And then I need a 1 over 5 to the r, so I'm clearly need to divide by 5 or something like that. But if I divide by 5, I'll get 1 over 5 to the 2r, so I'm trying the square root of 5. That's my thought process. Okay, and now it's going to be, so it's literally going to be 1 over the square root of 5 all to the power of 2r minus 1. I'm just checking that I'm going to get this. Um, I'll stick with 2r over 9, and then it's going to be 1 over root 5 to the power of 2r times 1 over root 5 to the, oh, sorry, to the minus 1. Okay, this is good, because this thing here is going to equal 1 over 5 to the r, which is something I want, and this thing here is going to equal root 5 when I take the reciprocal. Now I can write it as 2r root 5, because I'm just multiplying that 2r over 9 by root 5 over 9. And then I've got that 1 over 5 to the r in there. So it is... Basically, by substituting in for x equals 3 over root 5, I've managed to turn my answer from part C into what I want here. And finally, I can take my actual full answer to part C, which is this, and substitute in x equals 3 over root 5 into that. So it's going to equal 4 times 3 over root 5 times 9 minus 4 times 9 over 5 all to the minus 3 over 2. Again, I just want to say this is using part C. And then you, to simplify this, I think we're asked, what we're asked to leave it as, give our answer as a rational number. So it's going to be 12 over root 5. Then here, 
I'm going to get, it's going to take a bit of time, it's going to be 9 minus 36 over 5 to the minus 3 over 2. Although I might just change that 9 now. It's going to, if I put it over 5, it's going to be 45 over 5. Which will be 9 over 5 to the minus 3 over 2. Which is going to be 5 over 9 to the 3 over 2. By take, I've taken the reciprocal. So I'm going to times by 5 over 9, and then I'm going to times by root 5 over root 9. That is the same thing as 5 over 9 to 3 over 2. I times once, and then I times it by the square root. These cancel. This, be, this is actually 3. Um, that 3 will actually cancel partially with the 12 to give me 4. So I'm going to be left with 20 over 9. Which is a pretty neat result, given what we've just been asked to find. We've just been asked to work out this thing here, okay? And it looks like it's going to be horrible, but we've substituted in, taken the roots and so on, and got the answer as 20 over 9. Just want to make it clear. So this is actually what I was trying to find. Okay, good job.